concerns or requests that you have. Note also that there are other announcements in the bulletin. The flowers placed this day by Brigitte Robinson in memory of husband George and son George. Thank you for those. In the back of the bulletin, beginning on page 21, are a number of other announcements that you may acquaint yourself with. Note also this day, as we worship, we celebrate our Lord's Supper. Our Lord's Supper is open to all baptized believers who trust in Jesus as Savior and who seek to learn to live with him as Lord of all areas of life. At this time, for those who can come forward or to serve around the altar or it is brought to others who are not able to come forward at the end of the communion up here, you'll receive in your hands the wafer of bread, the body of Christ, and have a choice between individually filled cups, the darker liquid being wine, the lighter liquid being a grape juice, the blood of Christ. We do ask that you would look at the pew rack. You'll find some green little slips. Please fully fill out the front side. Place your prayer requests at the bottom. Look at the back side to see if there are other options that you might wish to consider or things that you might wish to communicate to the church office or to me. Fill them out. Place them in the offering as it comes by. Thank you. We begin our worship on page three. Please stand. We affirm together that God is good. All the time. time. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. We take time to silently confess our sin before God and one another. Most merciful God, as we stand before you in the all-revealing light of your eternal love, we cannot help but see all the ways we have sinned and fallen short. We have done and said things that have caused harm to others. We have failed to do and say things for the sake of peace. We have continuously sought after our own comfort rather than your world's need. Forgive us for our selfishness and short-sightedness and bring us into the way of active love of you and neighbor each new day. The good news is that Jesus Christ died to cleanse us from sin, and because of this, our joy can be complete. Receive the forgiveness of sins for for the sake of Christ. Amen. Our gathering hymn number 838.
We continue our worship on page five in the front of the bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together we pray, Holy God, because we love you, we also love Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Holy Spirit, give us the immovable faith that spurs us to action in love on behalf of all that you have created. Make us living channels of your mercy and healing that we might bring joy and wholeness to all those we encounter today and every day. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please generously share God's peace with one another. Please open your text to page eight. Page eight. This is the refrain of the uh, carol this morning, and you sing it so beautifully. I'm looking forward to hearing you participate. Amen. 
The lesson for today is from 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it who conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. We will read the 119th Psalm responsibly. With my whole heart I cry, answer me, O Lord, I will keep your statutes. I cry to you, save me, that I may observe your decrees. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I put my hope in your words. My eyes are awake before each watch of the night that I may meditate on your promise. In your steadfast love, hear my voice. O Lord, in your justice, preserve my life. Those who persecute me with evil purpose draw near. They are far from your law. Yet you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are true. Long ago, I learned from your decrees that you have established them forever. Please stand for the singing of the gospel acclamation and the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this morning from the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, where Jesus said, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. A little while the world will see, no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said. This is the gospel of our Lord. Lord. Please be seated. One day in the middle of summer, an atheist fell off a cliff. And as he tumbled downward, he caught hold of a branch of a small tree. And there he hung between heaven above and the rocks a thousand feet below, knowing that he wasn't going to be able to hang on much longer. And then an idea came to him. God! He shouted with all his might. And there was silence. No one responded. God! He shouted again. If you exist, save me, and I will promise that I shall believe in you and teach others to believe. And there was silence. And then he almost let go of the branch in shock when he heard the mighty voice booming across the canyon, that's what they all say when they're in trouble. (laughs) No, God, no, he shouted, more hopeful now. I'm not like the others. Why, I have already begun to believe, don't you see? Having heard your voice for myself, now all you have to do is save me and I shall proclaim your name to the ends of the earth. Very well, said the voice. I shall save you. Let go of the branch. 
Let go of the branch, yelled the distraught man. Do you think I'm crazy? As we learn from the story, the atheist was only willing to believe in God, to have faith in God, if it did not involve taking the risk of letting go of that branch as an act of total trust in God. If you have not read Hebrews 11 lately, please find that today and read it. It is known as the great faith chapter in the Bible. And the author tells examples of many, many people, people like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and many others. And he writes about how through faith they conquered kingdoms, how through faith they enforced justice, how through faith they obtained promises, how through faith they stopped the mouths of lions, how through faith they quenched the power of fire, how through faith they escaped the edge of the sword, and on and on. But it doesn't stop there. The author goes on to write, some were tortured, others suffered mocking and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. Now how many of you heard about that part of the Christian faith when you were in Sunday school? It doesn't look like too many. Imagine the Sunday school teacher saying, okay children, today we're going to learn about trusting God and how it might you get you thrown into jail and cut in two or hated by your friends or will force you to drive an old beater car for the rest of your life. That would certainly thin the herd, wouldn't it? Nobody I know is interested in a faith that would lead to struggling. Nobody I know would be interested in a faith that leads to tormented pain. Most people want a power and faith that gives them confidence and not fear. And that's why certain kinds of preachers only dwell on something that is referred to as the prosperity gospel. They teach their followers that all they need is to believe and have enough faith. And their faith will fix everything and everything will be okay. And it is a very, very popular message. It draws crowds. And it's often preached by TV evangelists because it's a crowd pleaser. And people really flock to hear it. And others watch on TV and put their tithes and offerings in the mail or they buy the preacher's books and audio resources. You know some of the more highly recognized prosperity preachers, don't you? You've probably seen them. Folks like Joel Olstein, Creflo Dollar, Kenneth and Barbara uh, Copeland, and the list could go on and on. These kinds of preachers sell a God that is channeled through visualization positive thinking, and another really popular approach that you may have heard of, and it's called name it and claim it. Did you ever hear that? Name it and claim it. It is all about naming what you want, claim it before the throne of God, and being so intense about your faith that you will receive it. You'll receive what you've named and claimed, that it will be yours. Preachers like this draw in people by the thousands because there are many people out there who feel hopeless in this world and they want a God who will step in and fix what is wrong, a God who will give them healing and security and success. Now the thing is, I believe in a God who can do all those things, don't you? I believe in a God just like the God that the letter to the Hebrews describes. A God who can enable people to conquer kingdoms. A God who can stop the mouths of lions. A God who can quench the power of fire. A God who can make me strong when I am weak. And that is often. I believe in that kind of God. But what I don't believe in are the false teachings that some sell 
who sell a fake faith that, preach, that teaches people that all they need to do is pull a few levers and punch a few buttons and God will dance to their tune and do what they want done. Because they teach their followers that all they need to do is follow their teachings and they get God, they can get God to bend to their will. Not the other way around. And if it doesn't work, well then, it's your fault, not God's. If you would only learn to visualize success like they taught. If you had only learned to practice positive thinking the way they told you. If you had properly named it in true faith and then claimed it in true faith. If only you had enough faith. If you didn't get what you prayed for, it was your fault. You didn't have enough faith. There was once a radio call-in program on a Christian radio station and the host had a soft grandfatherly voice. He was so reassuring and comforting. And one of his callers one night was a woman who said that she'd been attending one of those kinds of churches that I mentioned a minute ago. She went on to explain that she was blind. And some of the people that she went to worship with said that if she had enough faith, God would heal her of her blindness. And she was confused and hurt by their comments. So was the problem really that she didn't have enough faith? She asked the radio voice. And the radio host smoothly comforted her and then asked her if she had one of those white sticks the blind used to find the way around. And she said she did. And he went on to say, well, the next time when sub someone says to you that if you had enough faith, God would heal your blindness, you take that stick and wrap them upside the head. And then you tell them, you know, that wouldn't have hurt if you had enough faith. <laughs> you see, the whole mindset behind those kinds of preachers and churches is that faith is the tool you can use to get what you want. And it was because, and if it doesn't work, it's because it was your fault. You obviously didn't have enough faith. Think about it. Did the Apostle Paul have enough faith? Yet he was beaten and stoned and run out of several towns. Did all of the other apostles have enough faith? Yet every disciple except John died a martyr's death. Did Jesus have enough faith? Yet he ended up on the cross and died a terrible death. You see, godly faith is different than what many people hear on their TV waves or radio waves today. Godly faith is different than what is being put out there. There are many who teach that faith is when you hand God a sheet of paper and it has all your requests written on it and then you believe, you really expect God to do what you want. That's not biblical faith. Biblical faith is when you hand God a blank sheet of paper and then you tell God, not my will, but yours be done. So here's a blank sheet of paper, oh God. I trust you to fill it out with the things you want done in my life. Now granted, I'll still make my request known to God, won't you? I'll still tell him what I'd prefer to see done in my life, but I don't feel like I can corner God into a promise that God did not make. Listen again to the words of the text. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. 
By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and when we obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it who conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Please stand for prayer. Lord, help us to hand the blank sheet of paper to you and ask that your will be done, not ours. We don't always choose wisely. Be the one who is Lord of all of life. Help us to trust in the midst of all things. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of the day, number 759. We turn to page 12 in our bulletins as we join together in confessing our holy Christian faith using words handed down from the early church known as the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Confident in the breadth and depth of God's love and grace, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, help us to recognize the gentleness of your commandments, that we might follow them with our whole hearts, with complete trust in your goodness and mercy, God of love. Together we pray. We pray for each of our mission congregations, local partners, and care ministries. We also pray for the congregation's vision and call process. May we continue to work toward our mission and uphold our values while we support the call committee in moving toward a pastoral transition. We also pray for that pastor whom God calls to glory to Christo to work with us to move this congregation forward in mission, enlarge our hearts toward God while we walk with Jesus to bring new life and hope to every person. Conquering the world does not mean wantingly exploiting or destroying it simply because we can. Turn us away from our high impact, insatiable consumerism toward lifestyles that nurture and restore the biblical, the natural world, God of love. It is love, not violence, that conquers the world. Ground all who lead in this foundational love that they might find peaceful solutions to give difficult problems, God of love. Surround all who are dealing with physical, emotional, and spiritual challenges with your loving arms, especially those we remember in our hearts. Work through medical professionals and other care providers to bring healing and hope to those in need, God of love. Help us to see the message that faith in Christ Jesus conquers the world, not as a call to force others to do as we believe or believe as we do, but to call them to live in the unconditional love of God for all people, regardless of their individual beliefs, God of love. With joy, we remember those who have died with complete faith in your victory over death. May we follow them gladly to the end of our days, trusting in the promise of eternal life in you, God of love. With all our brothers and sisters in Christ here and around the world, we lift our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, our ushers will come forward to receive our morning's offerings to the Lord's work.
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this also for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. We pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, our communion assistants will come forward.
please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you safe in his grace until everlasting life. Amen. Together we pray, God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our sending hymn number 543. We thank those who have been worshiping online with us this morning. Please send your prayer requests through the link. Also, we thank those worshiping in person. All are invited and encouraged to come next door to the Fellowship Hall to enjoy uh, a cup of refreshment and get to know other Christians. Almighty God has created you and has a purpose for your life every day. Lord, help us remember if you are not dead. Live your lives in Christ rooted and built up in him and abound in thanksgiving. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is sending you.